A question I'm often asked is whether it's better to pay off your mortgage or to invest. So in this video, we'll explore the relative benefits of those two alternatives. There's also a spreadsheet that comes along with the video, which is only available to Patreon subscribers. But hey, you could be one of those two for just $10 a month. There'll be a link to it in the description below. So now let's look at the relative benefits of paying off your mortgage or investing in a bit more detail. This is not a recommendation. If you want advice tailored to your specific circumstances, seek independent financial advice. The decision whether to pay off a loan or to invest is actually quite nuanced. But roughly speaking, if the rate of return you pay on your investments after you've paid tax, of course, is less than the loan interest rate, then it makes sense to pay off your loan first. And that's because the rate of return that you make is less than the interest you'll be paying for the loan. For loans where the interest rate is very high, such as credit cards, then it's fairly obvious that you'd be better off paying off the loan before you invest. And beside me here, I've got some rates for US credit cards from creditcards.com. And you can see that the rates are fairly punitive at 16% APR. So if the return on your equity investments is just 6% per year, which is a reasonable estimate, then it makes sense to pay off your credit card first, because there you're paying a much higher rate of interest than you'd receive for your equity investments. A secured loan, such as a mortgage, has a much lower interest rate. That's because the bank can always sell your house if you don't keep up with your payments. The rate of interest on US 30-year fixed rate mortgages is currently 2.86%. You can see that's a multi-decade low. So that 2.9% is much less than the return you'd be getting on equity investments. Consequently, you shouldn't be in a big rush to pay off your mortgage and it's relatively much more attractive to invest in equity. But it's always worthwhile remembering your first priority when it comes to savings, which is to have a rainy day fund, because we never know what's going to happen. You could get ill, you could lose your job, or a member of your family may require emergency assistance. So it's always good to have several months worth of living money put aside in a very liquid and safe investment. That could either be cash or short dated government bonds. And of course, another thing to consider is whether you could get a lower rate on your loans. Looking at central bank policy rates at the moment, one of the few benefits of the pandemic is that interest rates are very low and they're likely to stay low for a long period of time. So it's always worthwhile looking at comparison sites such as U-Switch in the UK. And the switching tool from Money Saving Expert is also very handy, which also factors in things such as an early repayment charge, ERC, and valuation and legal costs, which can add to the cost of switching. And of course, there are similar comparison sites in the United States. And here I've shown NerdWallet. In a moment, we'll look at the economic comparison, but it's also worthwhile considering the psychological reasons why people choose to pay off their mortgage. The simple truth is that the house where you live is much more than an investment. That's particularly true if you want to raise a family, but even if you don't, it's a place where you should feel safe and secure. And if you've paid off your mortgage, you get a sense that you actually own the bricks and mortar in which you live. And that sense of security can trump any kind of economic argument which I might put forward, which would show that investing is probably better than paying off a mortgage. For some people, there's also kudos attached to owning your own property outright, without having any kind of obligation to a bank. Plus, if you own your own home, that sense of ownership also lets you feel like you can do up your house any way you like. And once you own your own place, you may never have to see this dreaded removal van ever again. Now let's look at the economic benefits of paying off your mortgage or investing. In this example, I'll be using these specific numbers. And I'm assuming that the person who's getting the mortgage is 30 years old. They have a fairly average UK salary of £30,000. They buy an average priced house of about £300,000 and they pay a 10% deposit. So the principal they have to repay will be £270,000. It's a 25-year mortgage, which is fairly standard in the UK. This lady's salary is going to grow at 4% per year, and we'll assume inflation is going to be 2%. Now I've assumed 4% income growth, 
despite the fact that in the UK, average income hasn't increased over the past decade. That's the blue line here, which is adjusted for inflation. And you can see that on average, we're not paid more than we were in 2007. In the US, on the other hand, we were starting to see rapid increases in income leading into the pandemic. The story was very different for different racial groups in the US, but there was an improvement across the board. That suffered quite a setback now that we've had the pandemic, but at least the trend had started to improve. So the two things we'll consider are either paying off our mortgage using some percentage of our annual income, where we assume that the interest rate on our mortgage is fixed at 2%, and that's for the entire life of the mortgage. Or alternatively, we'll invest at a 6% return, again using some percentage of our income. So the red line here is how much interest you save on your mortgage as you vary the percentage of your income which you use to overpay the mortgage. So if you don't use any of your income to overpay the mortgage, then you don't make any interest saving. But as you gradually increase the overpayments as a percentage of your income, you can see that you make a larger and larger interest saving. However, if you save the same percentage of your income and invest it in the equity market, because the interest rate on the equity market is so high compared to the interest rate on your mortgage, the economic benefit is simply much greater. Now, of course, you only reap that benefit at the end of the investment period, which is 25 years. If you want to try these numbers out for yourself and you're one of our supporters on Patreon, then you'll get access to this spreadsheet and you can enter your own details here in green and you can see the effect it has on your outcome here in blue. And there'll be a link to the Patreon post in the description of this video. Now, if you do overpay your mortgage, it's going to make a dent in your disposable income, which is how much money you've got left at the end of each month after you've paid all your bills and, of course, your mortgage. So going back to our 30-year-old, I've assumed that her monthly living expenses take up 40% of her salary, and the payments on her mortgage make up 46% of her salary initially. Now, of course, that reduces over time as her salary increases, and the mortgage payments remain fixed. So as we go through the 25-year lifetime of the mortgage, as we go from left to right here, you can see that the disposable income increases over time. And that's assuming we don't overpay our mortgage at all. Now, of course, when the mortgage is paid off, after 25 years, we get a massive pickup in our disposable income, which is, of course, the incentive for paying off your mortgage early. But if now we use 5% of our income to overpay our mortgage every month, we only end up paying our mortgage over a 21-year period. So we can skip the interest payments over the remaining four years. But a second benefit is that our disposable income shoots up after just 21 years. But the price we've paid for that is that our initial disposable income has dropped dramatically. So there'll be lots less money for luxuries early on in order to boost the money we get for luxuries later on. And if we tighten our belts even further and leave ourselves with even less disposable income by using 10% of our salary to overpay our mortgage, the mortgage will now be paid off after just 18 years. So if you can possibly lay your hands on any extra money, either through bonuses at work or through an inheritance or selling off your business, then it would certainly make sense to increase your disposable income by paying off a chunk of mortgage but it could still make sense to split that investment between the equity market and reducing your mortgage. Because when interest rates are so low, the investment returns for equity look much more attractive. If you enjoyed that video and you want to support us, then why not join our online community? You get access to all sorts of goodies, such as our online chat application Slack, where you can ask questions of me or any other members of the community. And you get to join our Sunday evening live call, where you get to ask questions of me and I answer them live as best I can. And you get access to a growing video library, which is only available to Patreon supporters. And alongside those videos, you also get notes, which allow you to follow the links and research topics in more detail for yourself. So if you do want to support us and get access to all those goodies, just click on the icon for Patreon on the far side of this page. And as always, thank you for listening.